Hello, welcome to live.withcode.uk. This is season two, where we are preparing for the Edexcel GCSE in Computer Science, the on-screen Python test. And this week, we're looking at the type of questions that can come up as the fourth out of six in that on-screen Python test. So remember, um, disclaimer, I don't work for Edexcel. I don't know what is going to come up in the summer exams. We haven't had any students yet at the, at the time of recording this video who've actually sat an external exam. Um, so this is just based on analysing all the past papers. Sorry, there are no past papers, the specimen, the sample paper, um, all of that kind of thing. So by analysing those, the type of thing that tends to come up in a question four is one of three styles of question. It could be like the first one where uh, the first example I've given you, where um, you have some blank spaces and you've got to fill in those blanks to make a working Python code, working Python program, sorry. Or you might get given a flowchart. I think I've done that for um, the second example, and you've got to turn that flowchart into Python code. Or it could be where you're given working Python code just in the wrong order, and there's aspects of that in this first example. Okay, so I'm going to go through the first one. Remember, in the actual exam, you don't have access to the internet and you won't get instant feedback like this. Um, but this is just to help you practice and prepare. And thanks for putting the time in as you practice and prepare. Uh, this first one is a palindrome detector. So it's worth reading through the question paper. If you're not quite sure what anything is, it should be explained in the question. So here, for example, a palindrome is a word that's spelt the same forwards or backwards. And the example given is race car because the first letter is the same as the last letter and then the second letter is the same as the second to last letter etc all the way through to the middle um, so race car is a palindrome the word palindrome is not a palindrome because p does not match e um, so we need a, a program that will detect whether or not something is a palindrome so let's get the code in a new tab so that we can see what's going on maybe zoom in a little bit um, there we go. So I'd recommend reading through the question paper first and then reading through the comments and then you can try and understand the code after. So we've got some global variables. Then we have to make a variable called palindrome and give it a suitable value. Well, that sounds nice and easy. Let's just make a variable called palindrome and set it to something. Well, what should we set it to? It doesn't say what data type. So let's read through the rest of the code. Um, can you find palindrome? Here we go. Palindrome is false. So we know it's going to be a Boolean value. So we could put true or false in. Um, and we could, I suppose, cheat and see when we get it working here. But let's think why we don't get the mark for false. Let's think about an algorithm. I guess any word is a palindrome until we prove otherwise. That looks like the algorithm we're using here. It's basically saying whilst it's currently a palindrome so this while loop won't run at all unless that's set to true that's enough for us to realize that it should be true um, and then what's it doing well if the letter position one is less than length and letter position one is less than letter position two so that means that letter position one and letter position two are kind of positions within a word that the user types in and this is a little bit of validation to check that we're not going to look outside the range of that word, as in we don't want to look at the one, two, three, four, fifth letter of a word like Anna. Um, OK, let's see if we can carry on. Convert the value stored in the word variable, sorry, in the word variable, the variable called word, um, to uppercase below. Uh, so we have a variable called word, which stores the answer to the question that the user is asked. We want to convert it to uppercase, which means make it all capital letters. Um, good, we've got the marks for that. That's good. Then, oh, I don't like these rearrangey ones. There are some good things about them and some bad things about them. The bad thing is it might not necessarily solve a problem in a way that you'd want to solve a problem. But the good thing is you've got everything that you need here. We just need to rearrange and change the order. So things to help. Use the home and the end keys. Home goes to the beginning, end goes to the end. It's logical. Hold down shift when you press like end or home and it will select them. And then control X to cut and control V to paste. That means that you're not copying them to have multiple versions and then getting confused about which one you're using. And yeah, just cut rather than copy. So let's think. 
Um, letter position two is length. Well, we don't know what length is yet. It's not defined up in global variables. It probably should have been, sorry. Um, we don't know what length is, so we need this line to go after the line that says what length is. So I'm going to pop that in there. Great, I've got some credit for that. It must recognize that that's in the right order. Um, so that seems fine so far. Here I'm saying letter position one is letter position one plus one. I'm increasing that by one. Well, I think that should go definitely after where we set letter position one to zero at the beginning. Um, but probably inside the while loop, to be honest. Um, otherwise, we're never going to look at more than just one letter. So let's pop that in here indent that across and then also pop that inside the while loop so it looks like letter position one is the position as in the index of the letter we're looking at at the start of the word and letter position two is going to be the index the position of the letter at the end of the word and we want to keep going through our algorithm so that we look at the next letter so letter position one increases and letter position two decreases so it starts at the end and then it decreases it moves towards the beginning okay so we're almost there um, so we set the initial values yeah that's fine then we've got some logic here whilst it is a palindrome and we've set it to true at the start and we're not looking past the end of the word and the first letter is before the last letter oops then we can move on to the next letter we should probably also check if they match. So I'm going to do that up here. Let's see if the word at the first position, the letter at the first position, is not equal to the letter at the last position, then it's no longer a palindrome, which means we're not going to carry on in our while loop. OK, that I think should work. Um, display the result. Here we go. Rearrange the following four lines. Notice it always says the start of the lines that are jumbled and the end of the lines that are jumbled. So let's see, we probably want an if first and an else afterwards. And then let's see, if it is a palindrome, we can say that it is a palindrome. Otherwise, if it's not, um, there we go. So the trick here is to make sure that you cut instead of copy. Don't ever add in extra lines. Sometimes some indentation is given to help you, sometimes it's not. Um, and then the other style of questions to work through are um, converting flowcharts into um, Python code. So have a, work, have a go as you work through those. Thank you for the time that you're investing to prepare, and I'll see you next week to work through some sample question five questions. All the best. Bye-bye.